Hello, I'm Gunchok Dorji. I'm the co-instructor for your survey methods course. So in this lecture series, we're going to talk about population and sample. So I've broken down the lecture into three parts. So in this part, we're going to discuss some key definitions, then discuss sampling error, coverage error, and sampling distribution. So basically, we'll learn about sampling theory or the concepts behind sampling. Many of the concepts are graduated over the course and I really encourage that you watch the lecture from the beginning through to end. Before we start, I want you to conceptualize this big picture and imprint it in your mind. You have your population on the left from which we take a sample and then we study a sample and generalize the results from the sample back to the population. Our entire lecture is really going to be about what is it that we could do to get a result from the sample that is applicable to the larger population we are interested in? Okay, let us go over some key definitions. First, what is a population? Well, all students at the UC Berkeley School of Public Health can be a population. All individuals injecting drugs in the US is a population. All physicians practicing in the city of San Francisco can be a population. In the context of a study, target population is the group of individuals or elements to which we would like to generalize the results from a study. This is the population of interest. And we would like to assign a time to the population, such as the number of students at UC Berkeley School of Public Health in 2016. Continuing with the definitions, let us understand sampling frame. The sampling frame or the frame population is the list or enumeration of the population that represents your target population and from which the sample is actually drawn. If you want to study the sleeping behavior of all adults in the city of Berkeley, your sampling frame can be a list of adult household members in Berkeley with a telephone. Likewise, a list of addresses, schools, hospitals, a registry of patients, etc. can be a sampling frame. And sample is the count of individuals we draw from the sampling frame for our study. And sampling fraction is the proportion of elements you sample from that sampling frame. All right, let us see what coverage error is. Often, our sampling frame is not able to fully cover or map the target population. If some elements in the target population are not present in the sampling frame, then however many and different samples you draw from the sampling frame, those elements are not going to get into your sample. For example, if your target population may be all adults and the sampling frame is a list of households with telephones, you are going to miss households with no telephone. Likewise, a sampling frame consisting of a list of landline telephone numbers may miss younger adults who may be using cell phones only and not have landline telephones. So this is coverage error and we have under coverage here. If you have 100% mapping of the sampling frame to the target population, then you have perfect coverage. Well, really this does not happen in practice. You always have some mismatch between target and frame population. Sometimes you have elements in the frame sampling frame that are not present in the target population then that means you have ineligible units. For example, in the household telephone survey, you may have commercial units in the sampling frame, which are really not part of your target population. Ineligible units are usually less of a problem than under coverage. You can deal with them by dropping them from the list if they are not too many. However, addressing under coverage is really more difficult. So from the very start, you want to probably examine your sampling frame carefully and make sure you are not missing important groups. You can check if the list is updated or not, or sometimes you may need to use multiple frames or list. Population missing in the principal frame can be present in another sampling frame. So basically understand that coverage error arises due to a defective sampling frame. Okay, what is sampling error? Sampling error really happens in the process of obtaining sample from the frame population. It can be grouped into sampling bias and sampling variability. 
Sampling bias occurs when certain individuals in the frame population have reduced or no chance of getting selected into the sample, and they systematically differ from the sample population in the characteristics that we are interested in. For example, in conducting a study to identify women who smoke during pregnancy, if the sample comes largely from an antenatal clinic in a neighborhood where most families belong to upper socioeconomic status, then it is very likely that the result would be more reflective of the smoking behavior of pregnant women belonging to higher SES. Here, the sampling design is flawed, so that is sampling bias. Okay, the concept of sampling variability is based on the fact that we do not get to observe a variable of interest in the entire frame population. We draw a sample and get the results from that one sample realization to speak for the frame population. Say, if a variable of interest is weight, then the mean body weight of one sample realization will likely differ from another sample realization. This is simply due to chance, because each sample you select would be slightly different from another sample. There is some variability from sample to sample, and this is really your sampling variability. Now let us try to understand sampling distribution. These concepts are revision of your knowledge from biostatistics and are important in understanding sampling design well. The table gives you the notations and the formulas for mean, variance, and standard deviation or standard error. Note that the population estimates are written in capital letters and sample estimates are written in small letters. And for population, we say standard deviation and for sample, we say standard error. Now, if we repeatedly draw samples of a given size from a sampling frame and calculate the mean from each sample draw and plot a distribution for the means from all the sample draws, we get the sampling distribution of sample means. So when we say sampling distribution of sample means, just visualize it as a distribution or a plot generated out of many sample means and the variance that you would get would be the sampling variance of the sample mean or simply sampling variance. Taking the square root of the variance will give you the standard error of the mean. Alright, let us try to understand sampling distribution with this example. The figures describe the sampling distribution of sample mean. In the first example, we take many many samples of size 30 and plot the mean body weight obtained from each sample. In the second example, we take many many samples of size 100 and plot the mean body weight obtained from each sample. Do you see any difference between the two distributions? Well, yes. I can see here in the second distribution that when the sample size increases to 100, the distribution becomes narrower and the estimates are less spread out. And the variability has decreased, as is evident from the decrease in the standard error from 10 to 5. Okay, so we just described sampling distribution of sample mean. And the same concept applies for sampling distribution of sample proportion. This is a normal distribution curve. I'm showing it here simply to revise that 68% of the values fall within one standard deviation of the mean and 95% of the values fall between two standard deviations of the mean and 99.7% of the values fall between three standard deviations of the mean. This is just a revision for you. This brings us to inference. In practice, we usually do not get to observe our entire population. We take one sample out of the sampling frame and generalize the sample results to the frame population, which is supposed to represent the target population. And to generalize the sample result, we calculate confidence interval for this sample mean. Alright, let us go over an example. Say we are interested in knowing the mean body weight of the population. To know this, let's take a sample. Say we take a sample of 100 people. So we measure the weight of each of the 100 individuals and we get a mean body weight of 150 pounds for the sample. We get a standard error of 5, say. Now how do we project this result back to the population? To do this, we calculate the confidence interval. Here I have cal calculated the 68% and the 95% confidence intervals. 68% confidence interval is one standard deviation to both sides of the mean and 95% confidence interval is two standard deviations to both sides of the mean under normal distribution. We just saw this in the previous slide, right? 
And using the formulas shown here, you can calculate your confidence intervals. And most times, we calculate 95% confidence interval. Now, how do you interpret your confidence interval? All right, the interpretation for the 95% confidence interval is that if we draw a sample of size 100 people from the same sampling frame many, many times, and each time you measure the mean body weight and calculate 95% confidence interval, then 95% of these confidence interval will contain the true mean in the population. In other words, for this example, there is a 95% probability that the true mean body weight of the population will fall within the interval 140 and 160 pounds. This is your interpretation for 95% confidence interval. And this is how we project our result from the sample back to the population. All right, we have just gone over some of the basic concepts and learned the key definitions that we need to proceed forward in this course. So before we conclude, let's look at this big picture again. We have the population, we draw a sample from it, we study the sample and get an estimate for the outcome of our interest. Then we generalize that to the population again. In the process, we should aim to reduce errors. And with this, we conclude here the first part of the lecture on population and sampling. In the next lecture, we will discuss sampling methods and various types of sample. Thank you.